I, I like to just quote Zig Ziglar. So if you'll do the next three to five years what other people won't do, you'll be able to do for the rest of your life what other people can't do. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And this is where we talk about raising private money for your real estate deals without asking for any money. Well, today I've got an amazing guest and friend to join me here on the show. And here's how he got started with only $3,000 in his pocket and with gut wrenching, horrible fear and absolutely no real estate experience. He bought his very first few parcels of land of raw land all the way back in 2001. Well, now fast forward today, he's the author of the book, Dirt Rich, which is the ultimate guide to helping you build a passive income. He's also the owner of Frontier Properties, which is a very reputable and successful land investing company. And in addition to that, he's been buying and selling land full time all the way back since 2001. Now he's completed, listen to this, over 5,500 land deals with an average return on investment of over 300% on the cash flips. And then in addition to that, he has gotten a return on investment of over 1,000% on the deals that he sells with financing terms. Now, prior to his land investing success, you might be able to relate to what he was going through. He was in this high stress, caught in a box in the corporate prison and could not get out. He felt trapped because his income stopped as soon as he stopped working. Well, even though my guest invests a lot of his time in helping other people like you learn how to do what he does, He's very actively involved today in running his land investing business, and he's dedicated to teaching the most current and relevant real world land investing methods to his students. In just a moment, you're going to meet my very, very special guest, Mr. Mark Podolsky, right after this. Well, Mark, welcome to the show, my friend. Jay Connor, it is a true pleasure, brother. Thank you. Well, you are certainly welcome, Mark. And my lands, 5,500 uh, land flips. I mean, what a track record you have got going on. I want everybody to know up front that you are known as the land geek. So if somebody's interested in learning how to get this amazing passive income, listen, you are in the right place. But Mark, this is the Raising Private Money podcast show. And so I want us to start out, first of all, in talking a little bit about private money. As I said, when I started out, this is the place where we talk about raising private money for our real estate deals without asking for money. And what in the world do I mean by that? You know, the old traditional way of getting money for your deals is you go to the local bank or the institutional commercial lender and you get on your hands and knees and you put your hands underneath your chin and you say, please fund my deal. Because you know, the traditional way of borrowing money for real estate deals is the lender makes the rules. Well, not in this world. In this world of raising private money, we're not relying on institutional lenders. We're not relying on banks. We're not relying on hard money lenders. What are we doing? We're putting on our teacher hat, our private money teacher hat, and we're teaching people that have never even heard of private money and lending and self-directed IRAs. And so as a result, the money starts chasing us for our real estate deals. I got 47 private lenders right now funding our deals, and not one of them had ever heard about private money before I put on my teacher hat. 
So anyway, I just want to be clear for our listeners, viewers, our audience here, that that's what we're talking about here on the show, private money without asking for money. So in your area of expertise, Mark, I know you do a lot of terms, a lot of terms, a lot of creative financing. We're going to dive into that. But when people do the land business the way you do it, and by the way, before I ask you the question, I got another first question. When someone is starting out to learn how to do the land business like you do it, do they have to have a big bank roll of money and cash to get started in this kind of business? They don't need it, but man, would it be nice to have. So if well, you have well, let me ask that open -ended question other people's then. money, you have a, yeah. a huge advantage. Because when you're first starting out, you're limited then. Let's say you, we, we recommend, you know, you're going to get traction if you can buy five to seven deals. Well, depending on your budget, you're then limited into what markets you can even go after. So if you have access to someone else's money, you have access to private money, you're already way ahead. You've got, you're, you've got yourself a blue ocean. As far as you, there's no competition for you because you can go and there's great deals out there and you're not limited by it. And so you can go into the market with a lot more confidence than someone who's new that says, okay, I've got to go into this, this rural area here because I only have, you know, like me, $3,000 to start or $5,000 to start. Right, right. Well, let's join forces then, uh, Mark, and give the audience everything they need. I, you know, I, I say it all the time. The money comes first if you don't want to be limited. So listen, uh, if you're watching or, or, or viewing or, or listening to this show right now, you can download for free the uh, the my ebook, which is called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business. You can download that for free at jconnor.com. And that's with an E-R, not an O-R. jconnor.com uh, forward slash money guide. And that'll get you started on the private money. Now, let's come right on over to your expertise specifically, Mark, and that being the land. So I want to hear the beginning of your story. How did this journey start? How and why? So it's 2000. I'm a miserable micromanaged 45 minute commute to work and back investment banker specializing in mergers and acquisitions with private equity groups. And Jay, it got so bad for me. I wouldn't get the Sunday blues anticipating Monday coming around. I get the Friday blues anticipating the weekend going by really fast and having me be back at work on Monday. So my firm hires this guy. He's telling me that as a side hustle, He's buying up raw land, pennies on the dollar at tax deed auctions. He's flipping them online and he's making a 300% return on his investment. Well, Jay, I'm looking at companies all day long and a great company, great, has 15% EBITDA margins or free cash flow. Average companies, 10%. I'm looking at companies all day long, less than 10%. So of course, I don't believe him. So I go to New Mexico with him. I got three grand saved up for car repairs. Jay, I wish I knew you then because I didn't realize I could use other people's money. So I'm using my own money. And I do exactly what he tells me to do. I buy 10 half acre parcels, an average price of $300 each. I flip them online and they all sell for an average price of $1,200 each. 300% it worked. So I took all that money, went to another auction where I live in Arizona. Again, it's 2000. There's no one in the room. I'm buying lots and acreage for nothing. I sell all that land and I make over $90,000 cash. So I go to my wife. She's pregnant at the time. I said, honey, I'm going to quit my job, become a full-time land investor. And she said, absolutely not. So I said, okay, okay, okay. So it took 18 months for the land investing income to exceed the investment banking income. And then I quit. I've been doing it full-time ever since. I'm now over 6,000 transactions and absolutely love it. That is amazing. So can you really do this part of the real estate investing business in front of your computer and you don't have to like go out and travel and see the land that, that you're flipping. I, you know, unless I'm doing like a million dollar deal, I don't go out and look at the property. So we can outsource that to someone local, have, give them our property report, tell them to shoot pictures and video, let us know what the roads are like, how, how far from services and 
really get a great idea of the property. What are the neighbors doing? Hopefully the neighbors aren't dumping anything on their properties. And so we have them fill out this big property checklist. It might take, you know, a couple hours and might cost us 50 bucks. That's amazing. So how are you finding these properties? So if I, if I could, let me just walk you step-by-step step through the model. Sure. So Jay, where, where do you live? I'm in Eastern North Carolina in this little teeny tiny town called Moorhead city, North Carolina, uh, population 8,000, our entire target market. I flip houses, you're flipping land, but our yeah. entire target market's only 40,000 people. So we're in, we're actually in a resort area cause we're here at the beach, but it's small. Okay, great, great. So I'm going to assume that you own five acres of raw land where I live in Arizona and you owe $200 in back taxes. So you're advertising two important things. I mean, number one, you have no emotional attachment to that raw land. You're in North Carolina and the property's in Arizona. And number two, you're financially distressed in some weird way because we don't pay for things like our property taxes. We don't value them in the same way. As a result, the county treasurer keep sending you notices saying, Jay, if you don't pay your property taxes, you're going to lose that property to a tax deed or a tax lien investor. So all I'm going to do is look at the comparable sales on your five acre parcel for the last 12 to 18 months. I'm going to take the lowest comparable sale. Let's say it's $10,000. I'm going to divide by four. And that's going to get me what Warren Buffett would call a 300% margin of safety. So I'm going to send you an actual offer of $2,500 for your five acre parcel. Well, you accept it. Why? Because for you, $2,500 is better than nothing. In reality, three to 5% of people are going to accept my quote unquote top dollar offer. But now that you've accepted it, I have to go through due diligence or in-depth research. I have to confirm you still own the property. I have to confirm back taxes are only $200. I have to make sure there's been no breaks in the chain of title, no liens or encumbrances. And because this property is so inexpensive, only $2,500, I'll outsource it to my team in Jamaica that's connected to an American title company, it costs about 11 bucks. If it was more than $5,000, I wouldn't take any title risk and I would close traditionally through a title company. But in this case, 2,500 bucks, I'm gonna send you a check for $2,300. I'm gonna pay the county treasurer $200. I own it free and clear. And now Jay, I'm gonna sell your property in 30 days or less. I'm gonna make a cash flow like a rental home. So I have a built-in best buyer. Do you know who it is? I uh, do not know. It's the neighbors, the neighbors. So I'm going to send out those neighbor letters saying, hey, here's your opportunity. Protect your privacy. Protect your views. Know your neighbor. So oftentimes, the neighbors will buy. Now, if they pass, I'll go to my buyer's list. The buyer's list passes. I'll go to a website you may have heard of. It's called Craigslist. It's the 15th most trafficked <laughs> website in the United States. I'll go right. to one I know you've heard of called Meta, where Facebook buy, sell groups in the marketplace. And then I'll go to the lands. I'll go to land.com, landmoto.com, landsofamerica.com, landandfarm.com, landflip.com, landhub.com, landcentury.com. These are platforms where people buy and sell raw land. But the secret of how I do it so quickly is I just make it irresistible. So all I'm going to ask for is a $2,500 down payment for someone else to control that five-acre parcel that you used to own. And then I'm going to car just payment. Your cash back. I just got my cash back. And now I'll make it a car payment. Let's say one ninety-seven a month and nine percent interest for the next eighty-four months. So it's a one-time sale. I'm going to get my money out on the down payment. I could go six to ten months out, and then I'm going to get one ninety-seven a month of passive income. Jay, no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents, and because I'm not dealing with a tenant, I'm exempt from Dodd Frank, RESPA, and the Safe Act. All this onerous real estate legislation. So then it's a simple game. Can we create enough land notes where our passive income exceeds our fixed expenses? And then we're working because we want to, not because we have to. And then you add fuel to the fire. I can keep all that passive income because I'm using Jay's money. I'm using private money to fund my deals. I'm really becoming financially free very quickly, which allows us to move up into Maslow's hierarchy of needs into self-actualization and really solve not just our money problems, but our time problems and have that, the time, the resources to really figure out what, what do we really want to do in life? 
I love it. I love it. You know, Mark, just to make sure that uh, anyone that's got to jump off of the show early before we finish, I want to go ahead and put up and out how people to get in contact with you to learn how you do about the, how you do this business. So what's the best way for them to reach out to you? I think you've got a free book to give them. I think a free book is the best way to, to start um, and see if the business resonates with you. You can go from there. So if they just go to uh, thelandgeek.com forward slash free dash book. They can get dirt rich for free. Now, look, you got to pay for shipping, but that's a, it's a great way to start. Yeah. So that is, so, so, so if you are remotely already intrigued and interested uh, in learning about how uh, Mark has put this model together, that's www.com the land geek g e e k geek.com forward slash free dash book and of course we'll have that in the show notes as well so my next question or my question that actually came to mind while you were giving the overview of the business model if this is so easy to do how competitive is this asset class how hard you know how hard is it to like, you know, these other landowners are going to be getting, you know, direct mail offers in, in, in the mail as well? Yeah, that's a great question. So I make it sound easy. It's not easy. And Jay, I'd argue anything worth doing isn't easy. It's a simple model, but it's not easy. So if someone's listening to this and think, oh, this is going to be get rich quick, this is get wealthy slow model. Um, that being said, let's talk about the competition. So, Jay, if you and I went to a RIA meeting, Real Estate Investor Associations meeting, 100 people in that room, 99 of them are going to be house flippers, landlords, and wholesalers. You and I would be the only land guy because you couldn't think of a more boring real estate niche. You're not going to go on HGTV or the DIY network and see flip this land. The before <laughs> pictures are all land. The after pictures are all land. So... <laughs> And there's billions of acres of land available just in this country. You, me, a million people can be in this niche. We'll all run out of money before we run out of deal flow, unless they're using your private money. But even still, even still, it's it's a massive market. There's hardly anyone doing it. And it's boring. <laughs> in other words, it's not very sexy, but it sure makes the wealth take place over a little bit of time. I mean, I heard you say in your uh, beginning of your journey story that it only took, what did I hear you say? 18 months to replace your 18 months. Uh, investment banker income or whatever it was you were doing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, I don't know many real estate investors doing any kind of asset class, whether it's single family, commercial, whatever. Uh, to where they're, they've actually been able to replace their income in 18 months. I mean, I've got some uh, mastermind members in my own group that have actually done it in six months. They've done it in nine months. But your average real estate investor that's out there starting um, is not going to have their income replaced in, in 18 months, I don't believe. No, I, I agree. And the reason I was able to do it so quickly was, number one, I was one of the first people doing it. Right. And so you number two, you've got an inefficient market. So it's not like you can go on Zillow and see what the property or the land is worth, which is why we have these crazy margins, 300 to a thousand percent. So all we're doing is taking what was once an asset to somebody, and there's now a liability and making it an asset again for somebody else. So you know it's 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 kind of a, just a, a really interesting niche in that in that sense, but to replace your income, if, let's say we you know, let's say you want to make ten thousand a month in passive income, right? You want to replace your your W two job. So Jay, the way the numbers work out is you need to invest a hundred thousand dollars into raw land, and that will throw off in say twelve to thirty six months, depending on if you're doing this full time, you're doing it part time. You know your learning curve, and that'll throw off ten thousand a month in passive income. If you want twenty thousand a month passive income, you're gonna have to invest two hundred thousand, and so on and so forth. Well, let's compare that to another business model. I'm thinking of like 
franchises, you know, the subways, the Quiznos, the, you know, on and on and on and on and on. Well, I know people that have bought franchises. They are a, they're in that, they're in the corporate prison. They just happen to own the franchise. They're right. working crazy 60, 70 hours a week. And they might be earning 50 grand a month after two or, th I mean, 50 grand a year after they've been in there for two or three years. You just said invest $100,000, not a franchise fee, but 100,000 over a period of time. That could be private money like we talked about. It could be your own money. And you've created these notes. Well, you know, you can't even get a college degree in 18, the 13, 36 months. And for goodness sakes, compare what you're talking about to a college degree. How much does a college degree cost these days? And what kind of return have you got when you graduate? Zero. <laughs> yeah, no, you know? absolutely. absolutely. I mean, shoot, I, we've got a good friend that uh, went to law school not long ago, and it took him a year to find a job. <laughs> Yeah. In, in yeah. Raleigh, North Carolina. So now as you were like going through the business model and you were doing a scenario and you hypothetically gave the example of, okay, here I am, Jay Connor. I'm living in North Carolina and I own a parcel of land, you know, way out there. My granddaddy would call it Hullop Scullop out there in Arizona or wherever. And you, and you, and you explained in the um, example that I was, I was behind on taxes. It's raw land. I'm not, in, you know, I haven't paid my taxes. I'm probably in somewhat of financial distress. Um, so given that, would you say one of your best criteria of list of potential sellers are out of state um, I was gonna say absentee owners, all raw land is absentee. You can't live there. Right, right. But you see where my head is. There's no such thing as yeah. an absentee owner. They're all absentee if it's raw land. Uh, but out of state owners that are behind on taxes, or is that just one little slice of potential motivated sellers? I think that's your lowest hanging fruit. But once you've established this is a market that's really strong, then I'll I'll send an offer to everybody, whether they are current on taxes or not. But when I'm first looking at an area or looking at a market, I might test it with a, a lowest hanging fruit first and then go up from there. Okay. Now let's drill down on your, uh, on your business model that you went over. The um, scenario that you gave was you said, let's assume that the value based on other parcels around in that area um, in, in the house flipping business, we would call it uh, based on the comps. I guess you right. call them comps. Uh, sure. So based on the, the comps in the area or the valuations, that it was worth, say, $10,000. So then you said to make your offer that you're actually going to mail them in the mail. <laughs> United States Post Office is still open, right? It's not all right. on the internet. Yeah. So you're right. going to actually mail them an offer of $2,500. Right. They accept your offer, let's assume. So... You're going to pay them $2,500. So now you own it. So now you're going to turn around and offer that land that once you've done your due diligence and you've closed on, do you actually take title to it? Absolutely. It's in my name okay. because so when I, when I sell it on owner financing, I don't want any cost for closure. So I'm going to sell it on a land contract, not a deed of trust. So that land stays in my company's name until they pay off that promissory note. And if they default, I keep the down payment, I keep the monthly payments, lowers my cost basis, and I do it again. I get a new there down payment, I get a new monthly payment. So when we there sell it, we don't use even credit checks. Right. Well, in other words, I guess it doesn't matter if they do default, if you got your money back. No, and, and we're using software to manage it. So I'll use a software called geekpay.io. It's a set and forget it payment system. I get my down payment by, via credit card, but I get those monthly payments via ACH. That way I'm not having to pay 2.9% to the merchant. Mm -hmm. And then if it bounces, no problem. It does all the accounting for us. It does all the notifications. Gee, hey, look, we can always make more money. We can't get more time. So 90% of this business is automated with software, inexpensive virtual assistants and software on the back end. 
You throw in private money in that, and now we're using three levers, other people's time, software and auto automation, and other people's money to scale our land business to the next to the next level. I love it. If you didn't grab that URL a few minutes ago, you can get Mark's book for free shipped to you in the mail. Just cover shipping. You can get that at www.thelandgeek.com forward slash free dash book. So what does the note look like when you turn around and sell it? So you, you collect your $2,500 in this example as the down payment. Now you're going to create a promissory note. Since you're not closing with, um, with, a, with a title company or a real estate attorney, um, you're using a land contract. So you're not actually transferring title till they pay it off. Uh, how do you figure the monthly payment? Or is that negotiable? Are you asking them what's the most they can pay? And are you charging interest? What's the, what's the note payable look like? Well, the way that I like to calculate it is for every $1,000 that I've invested into the raw land, I want that note payment to be $100 of that for, for capital recovery. So let's say, for example, my uh, investment was $5,000. I'd want my note payment to be $500. Okay. Well, that's easy to figure. Man, can't you make this more complicated? <laughs> I could. I could. Absolutely. Oh, so if so you want to do algebra and solve for X, but really, but you know, ideally though, you want to, you want to look at the car business, right? What's the best selling car in America? How do they, you know, factor in that, that payment? Be competitive like that. There's a reason it's fast. It's the it's biggest, you know, seller in, in America because it's affordable. You got a job, you can afford it. So I want to keep my monthly payment affordable to any American that's got a job. It's a fascinating model. Um, what percentage, I'm going to ask it this way. What percentage actually default and you get to go sell it again? So it depends on the market, right? So in 2010, I had a 50% default rate. I don't know if you remember the great recession, Jay, but I really got hit hard in 2010. Now in today's market, we're looking at a 12% default rate. I anticipate with a recession, which is going to have to happen at some point, right? Let's say it's going to be 15 to 20% default rate. When the market was super hot, we we're looking at about a 10% default rate. So anywhere between 10 and 20%, depending on how you're, how you're structuring that note. The lower the down payment, the higher the default rate is going to be. And right. again... We don't mind defaults because, again, we collect that money, it lowers our cost basis, and we just do it again. I have some students, they do what I call the dollar skittle. So they'll just ask somebody for a dollar down payment, and they'll make it a, a very inexpensive uh, monthly payment, knowing that that person is most likely going to default, and they'll just keep doing it, doing it, doing it until they got their money out. And then they might do what I call a land arb deal. So land arbitrage is when you make this, you you offer the spread to someone else. So Jay, say for example that I've got my my money out on the deal because of all these defaults, and now I want to I don't want them to default. So I know that the market can handle five hundred dollars down, five hundred a month. So I might go to somebody who's in the land business and say, Hey, I'm going to sell you this property for two fifty down, two fifty a month. You sell it for five hundred down, five hundred a month. You control that property with only five hundred dollars, so you don't have to spend, say, twenty thousand for that property, or whatever it is. You can control it for only five hundred dollars. Then you make that two fifty spread every single month, and only having, and so it mitigates that down payment risk. Again, that's assuming they're not using private money. If they're using private money; they'll just pay cash. I love the model, Mark. Again. You're listening, you're watching to this show. Take advantage of Mark's free gift, and that is his book, which is titled Dirt Rich. You can get it for free in the post office. Just cover shipping at thelandgeek.com forward slash free dash book. Mark, you get the final word. Jay, thank you so much for having me. And 
for those of you listening, I, I like to just quote Zig Ziglar. So if you'll do the next three to five years what other people won't do, you'll be able to do for the rest of your life what other people can't do. I love it. Mark, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate you. You got it. Well, there you have it. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and we really appreciate your feedback. If you are uh, watching on YouTube, be sure and ring that bell so you don't miss out on upcoming episodes. And if you happen to be listening on any of your favorite podcast platforms, be sure and follow me. And with that, we'll see you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnor.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.